called MDF or I'll look it up and I'll put it on screen here now. But it came left over. Hello, welcome back to Free Delirium. My name is AJ and today we're actually starting a project and I'm going to be chronicling the process to finish it. So in our living room main space, we have uh, figurines, prints that I am quite proud of and painted, maybe miniatures that I've painted up really well that I enjoy, uh, maybe some Nintendo Amiibo or similar figurines like that. And currently they're just sitting on the uh, little lead shelf riser that we have along the edge of the wall on the near the floor and I think they just deserve better treatment. So I want to make some sort of display shelf, display box, shadow box frame thing to just better display them. Now I looked at a few options for 3D printing the shelving units for this, but I think I want to go about a little differently. You see, I have this piece of material here. Uh, it's a uh, wood. A, I believe it's called MDF or medium density fiberboard. I have this fresh piece all safe and sound and I'd like to cut it into strips and then little notches in it and fit it all together like a grid. Um, like some of these that I have shown here on the screen. Now I don't have anything with which to do that. I've tried using uh, like a box cutter like this when cutting MDF in the past and it comes up with uh, a few issues that I've noticed. So one, the cut's never consistent. So since it's usually so thick, I would have to score from the top and flip the whole project over and score from the bottom. And so they don't always 100% meet up, but you can kind of see a little bit right here. Every time I use a box cutter or a blade to try to cut MDF, I'm left with these exploded edges where like the top couple layers on both edges, top and bottom, kind of explode out and make this like uh, unruly furled edge that I'm, I've never really been a fan of. And on other projects I've tried just shimming that off or using some sandpaper, but it just cr comes up with a sloppy job in the end. So I've got a few ideas for how I might be able to cut this full unused piece of MDF to then assemble it in exactly the way that I want. So what I have is this. You've seen it in a, in a, a few other videos. It is, uh, I guess you would call it like a kitchen screwdriver. Uh, it has a little pivoting action, which I always thought was pretty fancy. Um, but it has the locking, easy to use bit on the end of it. And I recently found both uh, a tightening chuck, the kind that would uh, have little, little teeth that will use at the end of a typical drill driver. And I found uh, router bits, so the kinds that look like a regular uh, drill bit, but have like teeth on the edges of it so it cuts instead of just drilling. Now, if I used this with those router bits just uh, flat out, I could indeed cut along edges with my piece of MDF here, but it would be very rough. My hand is a bit shaky. I drink a lot of coffee in the morning, so every day I end up with a bit of a shake in my hand. So I need something to keep it level, keep it steady, to uh, use to then add these router bits to then hopefully cut the MDF with. So I'm thinking I can 3D print that, some kind of jig or frame for this kitchen drill driver and we'll see what we can come up with.
So from that, I have printed this frame. So I have spaces at the top and the bottom for the purposes of inserting this down in top. And then I would use some zip ties in the top spaces to just kind of get it tight so it can't move around. Uh oh. Hmm. So I've made this notch specifically for the little LED protrusion to stick in, but it looks like it doesn't actually completely fit down inside there. I might have to make a spacer. I have to make a spacer to just add support right there. But you'll see I added some holes and spacers in the bottom so that I can have access to the auger bit that will later go on there and then a flat surface with a smaller hole in the bottom so that the bit can stick out a little bit hmm it looks like I might not be able to continue with this till it fits flush another issue that I've noticed is I don't have any clamps now I can very easily 3d print some cheap clamps I shouldn't expect much from them but if it really would just last this one project. I want something that I can clamp the board down to a table to then have a spacer clamped down on top of that so that when I use the my makeshift router here that I'll be able to have another board that this one will just go on to make as straight and perfect of a cut as possible. Now that's one of the biggest problems with using this PLA material in like home improvement or weight bearing, load bearing capacities is that it doesn't always hold very well. So hopefully they'll hold just enough to get this project done. And if they'd like to fail after that, maybe that would make a nice uh, video project in the future to show and showcase the uh, strength limitations of PLA material. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So next, let's look for some clamps online print them out we'll be back soon all right well it's another day the clamps took a bit longer to print than i expected them to but they work they're done and they seem to do just fine i printed my little spacer for inside here and i again like touching back onto my things to learn from 2020 video i didn't measure twice before i printed and the spacer is actually a little too small, so I had to lift it a bit and then just add super glue. I was planning on just kind of sticking the spacer in there, and friction should have helped me if the spacer would have been big enough, but it wasn't. So I added super glue to hold it on, and then I even added a zip tie around it to try to hold the whole thing together as best as possible right around the two sides in opposite directions, which would open this up and cause the spacer to fall down. So we don't want it to do that. So I added the zip ties for a little extra strength. Now I've also added onto the screwdriver the auger bit and the router bit that should um, make this whole setup work. And I guess that means it's time to now try it in here. So I'll set this off to the side so there's nothing damaged. It should stick down to the hole. Ooh, that's very solid. So that light now rests on the spacer. You can see everything inside here just fine. And the cutting bit is even and flush with the hole there. This is turning out to be pretty perfect. So if we 
hold this together as tight as possible, push the bit to the side. I can feel it tugging on the screwdriver, but it's actually not coming anywhere near the walls like I expected it to. Hmm. All right, so this might just work. So my original plan, so I have a bunch of zip ties here. My plan was to zip tie the, the whole thing together so that I can take it apart later on. But I should also be able to get it pretty snug and pretty tight using the zip ties, especially since there are all these angles and bulges that the, as everything tightens up, it should push down harder into the uh, rig to then hold everything a bit more securely. So let's see what that looked like. Okay, so we have the zip ties on. Everything's held pretty securely. And I noticed that when moved back and forth, left and right, the tip can get pretty close to the edge of the brace. So that whenever I'm using this, I want it to be pushing it forward or backwards, never left or right. And so I measured the across the bottom of this and it comes to 60 centimeter or 60 millimeters. So I know that I want this drill bit to be coming down at exactly 30 millimeters from each edge. So I want my cutting surface to be 30 millimeters from the brace that I've clamped down to the table so that when I use this, it should cut exactly this outer 40 centimeters off. So the whole thing is 70 sticking out here. So everything looks ready to go. Let's give it a try. So I want to make sure that I am turning in the direction of the drill. So there we go. In this direction. And it should just work. Hmm. Doesn't seem to like it very much at all. So this board moved quite a bit. We'll be back to the drawing board for a short period of time. So I've moved this clamp so it is physically holding the board that I'm trying to cut. And I'll just have to stop before I get to the end and figure out a different way to cut the very last bit. But it is very possible that these 3D printed PLA clamps are just not going to cut it. Like if they could easily be considered toys for what I'm trying to do. So I've remeasured, moved the clamp, and we'll try this again. So I can see through the hole here that it does line up with the edge of where I'm trying to cut. So here we go again. cut it off. Maybe I'll try it spinning in the other direction. <laughs> nope. It's just not working. Well, this may take a more in-depth, serious uh, return to the draw drawing board. So this might be all we've got this week on 3 Delirium, but our uh, 3 printed router is not quite working. So tune in next time to see if we figure it out. <laughs> if we just give up on this project and the whole completely. Maybe MDF is really best cut with a laser cutter and maybe that's what I should just stick with. I don't have a laser cutter, but I can come up with something else. I'll talk to you next time. Here at 3 Delirium, we can all hang out and uh, hallucinate about the possibilities of 3D printing. And if you really like my content, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to. And there is a Patreon page if you feel like you'd like to do more. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week.